today on a very special food theory. There it is. Ah! Woo! There it is. Ah! Ah! Oh! Ah. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that, if consumed too quickly, will cause a theory headache. Make sure you consume responsibly. Oh, McDonald's is a real estate company. Uh, all the food I eat has been a lie. Medium fries are a waste of money? <sighs> Man. Some people just can't hold their theories. What type of dessert person are you? Everyone has their favorites. Some people are all about the baked goods. Others are chocoholics. Based on our last episode, they're probably healthier because of it. Me though, I'm all about the frozen treats. Ice cream, milkshakes, slushies. I need them big and I need them fast. Which means that I tend to get brain freeze. A lot of brain freeze. Yet, no matter how many times I get burned, those sharp shooting headaches don't seem to slow me down. I want to be hurt. I need to be hurt. <laughs> might mistake me for some kind of a masochist. Okay, maybe I don't need to be hurt that badly, but it does make me ask the question, can brain freeze kill me? I mean, something is going on that's causing huge amounts of sharp, intense pain in my scullular region. It's kind of an important part of the body. Pain happening there is probably not a good sign, right? It's probably my body telling me that I should stop, or at the very least, slow down. And yet I don't. I steer into that skid and double down. Mm. Oh, whoa, 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 hold up now, hold up now, hold up now, hold up now, hold Ooh. up, man. You gonna continue to eat the froyo even on top of the brain freeze? But like, what's the risk of doing that? Could I pass out? Could I die? So today we're looking into the science and strategies of brain freeze. What causes it, what we can do to prevent it, whether certain things provide it more than others, and whether the cold can kill. In order to understand whether brain freeze can kill us, we first have to understand what exactly it is. Its other name, ice cream headache, really does the most accurate job of summarizing the sensation. A small but intense version of a headache right above the eyes. So, talking about the science of headaches seems like it should be a great place to start. Now, obviously there are lots of different types, but in general, headaches like cluster headaches, hypertension headaches, and migraines are thought to be associated with a common function known as vasoconstriction. Vaso meaning vein, and constriction meaning a tightening. Literally, your veins being squeezed. Think of your vessels as highways and road systems in your body. Wider roads means more blood flowing all over your system. Suddenly narrow those roads and your whole body becomes like Los Angeles at rush hour or any other part of the day. Huge traffic jam. We experience vasoconstriction and its opposite vasodilation all over our bodies all the time in order to help deliver blood to the places where it's needed and steering it away from the places that aren't doing as much work. Got cold hands in the winter? Well, your body has diverted most of the blood to your organs and constricted the vessels in your fingers, leaving them literally and figuratively out in the cold. Do you get embarrassed easily and your face flushes? Well, this is your body vasodilating all the vessels in the surface of your face as a defensive mechanism, trying to push more blood to your head to help your brain think of a way out of the situation and only succeeding in making you even more self-conscious. So what does all that have to do with your ice cream headache? It turns out a lot. When you ingest something cold and it hits the roof of your mouth, which is full of blood vessels, these vessels have a sudden drop in temperature. It causes them to vasoconstrict. The sudden cold shock causes two main blood vessels at the base of the brain, the anterior cerebral artery and the interior carotid artery, to rapidly expand and contract in an effort to heat things back up. These rapid changes trigger nearby pain receptors. But if all this constricting and expanding of blood vessels is happening in the mouth, then why are we feeling the pain up in our forehead? Well, this is actually a story of referred pain. Pain that you feel in one place that's actually caused by something happening a long way away. Take for instance migraines. The pain you feel with migraine is thought to start from the complete other side of your head, specifically down at your brainstem. People with migraines tend to become light and sound sensitive. Well, it's because all of it's rooted at the brainstem, which connects to a whole bunch of other important areas, like the sensory cortex of the brain as well as your limbic system, which is also why people tend to feel sensitive and emotional during migraines. But again, why am I feeling up here pain that's apparently coming from down there? It's all referred pain. You see, the trigeminal nerve is this massive sensory nerve responsible for sensations all around the face. 
like the name trigeminal implies, it breaks up into three major branches, one for your jaw area, one for right under the eyes, and one for the forehead. The good news about this structure is that one part of your face has a good understanding about what the other parts of your face are doing. The bad news is that three branching structure is why you become utterly crippled on your third bite of a DQ Dilly Bar. You see, because the trigeminal nerves connected directly into your brainstem, when there's a problem happening down here during a migraine, the nerve is carrying those painful feelings up here to the forehead and face. It's referred pain. And this is why scientists, all those ice cream and 7-Eleven slushy scientists out there, think that brain freeze works in the same way. You sip your Slurpee, the mouth gets cold instantly, and all of a sudden the blood vessels in the mouth are freaking out, expanding and contracting. This rebound dilation sends a pain signal to the brain through the trigeminal nerve. But because this thing has all these other branches to it, we're actually feeling the pain up here, in the upper branches, just like we would with a headache. So great, now that we have as much knowledge about brain freeze as the majority of the scientific community, and yet we still haven't decided whether it can kill us. Well, first, it's important to note that not everyone gets brain freeze. Only one third of the total population does, to which I say, jealous? This fact is also baffling to scientists because all the biological stuff that we just discussed, yeah, that's the body's natural response, so technically everyone should be having the same physical symptoms, and yet for some reason, they don't. It has been proven that if you're more susceptible to migraines, you're also more likely to have brain freeze, so sorry about that one, guys. It's kind of like lactose intolerance for slushies. Anyway, after looking online for any examples of dangerous cases of brain freeze, the consensus was that doctors tend to call it harmless. And it makes sense. Think about the science that we just covered here. What we're feeling is a headache resulting from changes in blood flow inside the mouth. The pain you feel, while certainly intense, is completely contained in your trigeminal nerve. You're not actually freezing tissue or damaging your brain. And to get a sustained effect from brain freeze would be even harder, since in order to keep your mouth as cold as it needs to trigger the reaction, you'd have to keep eating. Something that is almost impossible because you're in so much pain. After digging real deep in the web, I was able to find just a handful of examples of people saying they pass out after chugging a slushy, which, while certainly not confirmed, seems like it could have been connected to brain freeze. But here, I actually suspect a different biological mechanism is going on. You pass out when your brain doesn't get enough blood, and I don't care how much your mouth temperature is fluctuating, the hard palate suddenly getting cold isn't going to be sucking away so much blood that it's going to hard reset the brain. Now, you know how some people faint at the sight of blood? That's called vasovagal syncope. When your body overreacts to some trigger, another major nerve, the vagus nerve, responsible for internal organ functions such as digestion and heart rate, signals for the heart rate and blood pressure to drop suddenly. That's what causes reduced blood flow to the brain and an ultimate loss of consciousness. Well, my guess, and it is truly my guess because no one's really bothered to look into these cases of passing out due to brain freeze, is that vasovagal syncope is what we're seeing here. Because the trigeminal nerve and the vagus both connect to the brainstem, one gets the brain freeze signal up here, which causes the vagus to overreact, drop the blood pressure, and cause the passing out. Scary? Certainly. But deadly? Definitely not. So, now that I was secure in the knowledge that I wouldn't die if I gave myself a lot of brain freeze, I wanted to run some experiments. So I'm pretty excited, because this experiment's gonna have me eating Slurpees and ice cream and milkshakes, all my favorite desserts, to see what gives me brain freeze the fastest. So equipped with two mega slushies, two milkshakes, and a giant tub of ice cream, it's so hard to open. Hold up. Eventually a tub of ice cream, it was time to get testing. And uh, very quickly, my initial enthusiasm for the experiment wore off. I was so excited, Matt. I was so excited. But I powered through, and immediately there were some huge findings. If you want to never experience brain freeze again, start a food channel and do experiments on brain freeze that cause you immense personal pain and just ruin all your favorite foods. But my efforts weren't in vain. When comparing the brain freeziness of a slushy, which is just ice and sugar, to a dairy-based dessert like a milkshake or even ice cream, I found that the high ice content led to significantly faster and more intense brain freeze for me. I'm hypothesizing here that it has to do with the fact that the specific heat of water is actually higher than the specific heat of the average ice cream. A higher specific heat means that it takes more heat from your mouth to raise the temperature of water, or in the case of our slushy, the ice crystals. Ice cream, meanwhile, gets warmer with a little less energy, meaning that your mouth can more easily handle and neutralize the cold coming from those frozen desserts. More cold exposure means a faster and stronger vasoconstriction and nerve reaction, leading to more immediate and stronger brain freezes. This also aligns with other research that shows that children actually have brain freeze more often than adults. An article from the Cleveland Clinic suggests that kids are more likely to get brain freeze because they have smaller palates and throats, and when they're attacking the ice cream cone like a velociraptor, they're bombarding their 
their palate with way too much cold input that they don't have enough space to neutralize, setting off that strong trigeminal nerve response. My second major question though is something that I've seen in a lot of discussions, to straw or not to straw. According to my online research, straws are so effective at assisting the brain freeze process that the website foodchallenge.com advises you to not use a straw when engaging in an ice cream or milkshake eating contest. The theory goes that it serves as a direct pipeline up to the sensitive nerves on your palate, hitting them with the intense chills straight from the glass. Even competitive eater Matt Stoney moves away from using a straw during cold-based eating challenges. So what is the best strategy for avoiding brain freeze while eating your favorite frozen dessert? Well, going slowly, duh. But screw that noise, I'm looking to put these things down as fast as possible. So what's gonna give me the best chances of avoiding brain freeze? Spoon, straw, or straight chug? Shockingly, my personal experience didn't line up at all with the online hype that I'd read about straws. Chugging was far and away the fastest route to freeze town. Straws came in at second, and spoon was third. Basically, it all boiled down to volume and placement of the frozen tree. Straw? Right into the back of my throat, but... I was getting less of it because it has to go through the straw and I was having to constantly readjust so it wasn't getting a constant flow. The spoon was landing in front of the mouth, but I was having to kind of push it back and it was still lower volume. The chug, I was just getting a ton in there, front of mouth, back of mouth, whatever and huge amounts. To be fair, the team would tell you that my mouth is definitely way too big though, so my ability to pour huge amounts of ice cream into my face may be skewing the results a bit. One thing that was definitive though, is that I had single-handedly made the worst ASMR video ever. Mm. So there you have it, friends. The results are in. Brain freeze, based on the limited amount of information that science has, is a weird cousin of the migraine. It works by hijacking one of the largest nerve pathways in your head to send referred pain up to your forehead when you should be experiencing it down in your mouth. You can take advantage of chemistry to give yourself the least amount of brain freeze by sticking with ice cream for yourself and saving all those ices and slushies for your enemies. And through it all, it is not deadly, so feel free to go forth and experiment yourself. Since I didn't experience brain freeze as easily with a straw, I'd love your Input. Run a little experiment at home. If you've got a spare milkshake on hand, give it a chug with and without the straw and let me know in the comments which one gave you the brain freeze more quickly. It'll be a fun little poll to find out where Team Theorist gets all freezy. Now if you'll excuse me, all this science has given me a headache. A real headache. So I'm gonna go lie down. But as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs> 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 Ah, go away. Oh, 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 mm. oh that's gold.